everybody um, I'm already at a loss for words and we haven't even gotten started for those of you who know me very well that's not normally the case for me but um, first I just want to say that for those of you that know Evan had surgery last week it was a minor surgery it was a hernia surgery and he is recovering beautifully with that and um, so this is not in regards to that he did have um, a different doctor's appointment last week and so we're going to talk a little bit about that one but first we're just going to go give a little bit of background before we explain what happened in the doctor's office last week so um honey what what would you say drew your initial attention to, you know, the storyline, what we're discussing today? Uh, about two and a half, three years ago, I noticed a little quiver in my thumb. And it was pretty small and slight and progressed into a tremor of the hand uh, in that side. And I kind of assumed that it was... Um, uh, essential benign familiar tremor because some of my mom's brothers and sisters um, had uh, that varying degrees of varying degrees of that um, and it progressed a little bit further and a little bit further and started progressing in ways that I didn't see as being very familiar tremor and so I decided to seek a neurologist to, to check me out. So just to, to be clear, <clears throat> the pattern wasn't necessarily following like your aunts and uncles. So right. something stood out as a little different. That was acting a little bit different, progressing quicker than most essential tremors ever would. Right. And so um, that leads us to, and, and both of us have been kind of operating under the assumption that this was likely um, an essential tremor, um, which is annoying, but not necessarily a big deal beyond the annoyance. Um, so that takes us to Thursday morning. So to, Thursday morning, I had a tele appointment with a neurologist. A what? Tele appointment. So like a video. Video conference appointment with the doctor. Um, it was to her decidedly not an essential tremor. And why is that? What? What? It didn't follow the suit of essential tremors. Essential tremors tend to be something you have to, when you focus to do something, like to pick something up or to make a brush stroke of a paint it, it gets worse where mine is when the muscles are at rest it tremors more and an essential tremor doesn't really shake at all when you're at rest just when you're focused on something right right, right. 
Okay. And the central tremor tend to be both sides of the body at the same time. I don't think I even realized that till the neurologist kind of pointed that out. That that's not very common with that one. And yours is. Yeah, and mine's exclusive. exclusively my right uh, hand, arm, shoulder, and lower extremity. So my right leg as well. Um, what does? And barring a few tests that they wanted to do because you can't blood test for for what they think I have, uh, they believe it to be early onset Parkinson's. <laughs> So early onset Parkinson's disease, they usually just have to rule out the other things. So I have an MRI. What are other things? Could the MRI would rule out any tumors in the brain or physical abnormalities? But does she think this is it? That mm. that would be what it is? No, that would be a very rare, even more rare than right her current diagnosis. Only about 2% of the 1 million people in America with Parkinson's were diagnosed before 50. And I'm 47. So, um, what is this bringing up for you? Just waves of emotion. Um, Grieving, almost, sadness, fear, fear of being a burden to anyone. That's not my fear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any fear of that, but I, I know I probably would, honestly, if I was in his situation, and that if he couldn't acknowledge that that's a fear for himself, it wouldn't not be a fear, it just... <laughs> it would just hide, so I'm glad it's... Parkinson's is a disease that likes to make you small, make your movement small, make you close in emotionally. Examples are like taking shuffle steps instead of big long strides or not really finding it natural to swing the arms any longer. So what you gonna do, baby? I'm, I have to think about every swing, think about every step and make it big and make it full. Consciously do the opposite of what it's going to be inclined to do. To, to, keep, to keep those pathways open and functioning because if you don't use it, you lose it with Parkinson's. And what are the best ways we can do that? Some of the best medicine is dance. Dance, baby. Being physically active, working balance, training of any kind. Walking. Why balance training? Because it works both sides of the brain. It's both of your sides of your brain functioning at the same time. Parkinson's is not a death sentence. No one dies from Parkinson's, but they die from complications, falls, aspirations from not being able to swallow. It can get really difficult to swallow, swallow as, as, it progresses. as it progresses. So um, how many stages are there of Parkinson's. There's five stages. Do you have to progress through those? Some stages? people stay in stage one or two their whole lives and never progress. Some, I think it's really lifestyle and inputs. And there's no two people who have ever experienced Parkinson's the same way. So we're determined to find a beautiful balance between what Western medicine has discovered and what. Um, more Eastern and holistic approaches have to offer, and we're we are approaching this with curiosity and a sense of adventure that we will um, that his his body is our next frontier. <laughs> I still have a lot to give, and so much. Is this going to make it so you can't be a massage therapist? Oh heck no! Heck no! <laughs> <laughs> It's probably actually a good career to have, being that it 
works dexterity every day and it requires the balance that that I know it takes and a little tremor is just a little healing vibration. Well, it'll improve his dexterity and just keep him keep him moving and not to mention that people tend to love the tremor. <laughs> it gives like a natural vibration that has been really beneficial in a way. <laughs> So, <laughs> calming, soothing. So, um, why are we talking about this in this way? <laughs> We're not asking for anything. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. It's just a way of keeping it not small and putting it out there and letting people experiencing experience kind of our process with it all. Do you for sure have Parkinson's? No. So part of this will be the, sharing the, our process of finding out if he has Parkinson's or if it's... But there's only else. a few more things that they'll, you know, kind of rule out. And we'll have some tests and want some love from everyone on those as yeah. they come back clean. I no. think... There we go. <laughs> I to my fingers. One of the biggest things is showing people that there's a way that you can take control of a diagnosis and be bigger than it not let it break your spirit but are you allowing yourself to feel everything I'm actually been very lucky because I took some time off work because of the surgery that I'm recovering from and finding this news out I don't have anything to distract myself from it no work, no, I'm just laying here recovering, so in a sense it's been very divinely timed in a way that allows me to process all the emotions fully, look completely, them. look right. them right in the eye and face them and then let them go through me like a little conduit that I am. Which in some ways has been like the most painful thing ever to feel myself too because I'm also processing my own pain associated with this. But to watch his pain the last few days, but there's also this kind of incredibly beautiful, inspiring, almost sexy thing about watching him just face his emotions and he's like oh there's a big scary emotion over there I guess I've got to go deal with that one now and you know we immediately almost immediately went into this realization that we are about to make some of the most profound friendships of our entire life we are going to meet people who are so pivotal in our experience here on earth that it's going to be hard for us to believe we didn't meet them before now um, we know that we're going to probably meet some people who would really benefit from some hands-on love and some, some healing themselves. And so this is going to open up doors and opportunities that neither one of us would have ever thought to look behind those doors. Sorry. I'm sorry. But we know we won't really be able to see all of those opportunities with clarity if we don't feel the feelings that are coming up for us first and as we step through those on the other side we're going to be able to see the hidden gifts that would be easy to overlook in a not so fun situation but again we're you know we're not excited about this but we're willing to approach it with curiosity instead of intense fear and willing to hold space for each other in the process that like there might be some days that are just really particularly tough days and we designate that as a shitty day like it's allowed to be a really crappy day today <laughs> and there will also be one some some days that are just so amazing that just a, an ever-present reminder that it's all divine it is all divine it's I'm so grateful to have you. I'm so grateful for you. <laughs> for every second and the outpouring of love that we have felt from some of our nearest and dearest these last days has been 
so humbling. Extraordinary. No, not in it alone. <laughs> um, we are... It's interesting. Um, with me just finishing school and going into a field of healing with him... Um, we were already planning on creating some kinds of videos, um, mostly, you know, talking about <laughs> the amazingness of the human body and, um, you know, maybe philosophical and spiritual subjects. And we were already in the process of creating a channel on YouTube where we were going to probably put videos like that. And um, not that we plan on only doing the videos pertaining to to um, his Parkinson's journey, but there will be an entire subset on there that is updates for this, and that's, I think, likely how we will um, update moving forward. And so once we get this uploaded onto there, we will share that video, and obviously, if you're not interested, don't. <laughs> don't follow but if you have any interest in following um in any aspect of our journey whether it's more of the the philosophical and the career end of things or whether it's sharing in his healing journey and and we welcome any input from anyone about anything to do with this i mean just our, know mi we are our not minds afraid. are our minds are open <laughs> we're not afraid we're not going to do everything that we're told to do but we're willing to look. We're willing to look, listen, and feel. and feel what's true for us. So we love you. We all. love you all so Thank much. You so Thank much. you. Thank you for starting this journey with me. And thank you for your vulnerability. It is so sexy. <laughs> <laughs>